Most storms begin with an indicative spark of electricity in the atmosphere between clouds, the air or the ground. In the early stages of development, air acts as an insulator between the positive and negative charges in the cloud and between the cloud and the ground. Once the opposite charges build up sufficiently, this insulating capacity of the air is disrupted, resulting in a rapid discharge of electricity that we know as lightning. The flash of lightning temporarily equalises the charged regions in the atmosphere until the opposite charge can accumulate once more. Lightning can occur between opposite charges within the thunderstorm cloud or between opposite charges in the cloud and on the ground. The lightning we experience is one of the oldest observed natural phenomena on Earth. It can be seen in volcanic eruptions, extremely intense forest fires, surface nuclear detonations, heavy snowstorms, in large hurricanes, and of course, thunderstorms. Did you know that lightning causes thunder? Energy from a lightning channel heats the air briefly to around 28,000 degrees Celsius which is even hotter than the surface of the sun. This causes the air to explode outward. The huge pressure in the initial outward shock wave decreases rapidly with increasing distance and within roughly 10 meters has become small enough to be perceived as the sound we call thunder. Thunder can be heard up to 25 miles away from the lightning discharge but the frequency of the sound changes with distance from the lightning channels that produce it because higher frequencies are more swiftly absorbed by the air. Very close to lightning, the first thunder you hear is from the closest channels which produce a tearing sound because the thunder contains high frequencies. A few seconds later you hear a sharp click or loud crack from the lightning channels a little farther away. Some seconds later, the thunder from the most distant part of the flash has softened to a low frequency rumbling. Because light travels through the air at roughly a million times faster than sound does, you could use thunder to estimate the distance to lightning. Just count the number of seconds from the time you see a flash until you hear thunder. Sound travels approximately one-fifth of a mile per second, so by dividing the number of seconds by five, gives the number of miles to the flash. Most, if not all, lightning flashes produced by storms start inside the clouds. If a lightning flash is going to strike ground, a channel develops downward towards the surface. When it gets less than roughly 100 meters from the ground, Objects like trees, bushes and buildings can start sending up sparks to meet it. When one of the sparks connects the downward developing channel, a huge electric current surge rapidly down the channel to the object that produced the inviting spark. Tall objects such as trees and skyscrapers are more likely than the surrounding ground to produce one of the connecting sparks and so are more likely to be struck by lightning. Mountains also make good targets, however this does not always mean tall objects will be struck. Lightning can sometimes strike the ground in an open field, even if the tree line is close by. The creation of lightning is a complex process. We generally know what conditions are needed to produce lightning, but there is still debate about exactly how a cloud builds up electrical charges and how lightning forms. Scientists think that the initial process for creating charge regions in thunderstorms involves small hail particles called grapple, which are like various sized hail droplets and grow by collecting even smaller supercooled liquid droplets. When these grapple particles collide and bounce off smaller ice particles, the grapple gains one sign of charge and the smaller ice particle gains the other. Because the smaller ice particles rise faster in updrafts than the grapple particles, the charge on ice particles separates from the charge on grapple particles, and the charge on ice particles collects above the charge on grapple. 
Laboratory studies suggest that grapple gains positive charge at temperatures a little colder than zero degrees Celsius, but gains negative charge at colder temperatures a little higher in the storm. Scientists think the two largest charge regions in most storms are caused mainly by grapple carrying negative charge in the middle of the storm, and ice particles carrying gained positive charge in the upper part of the storm.